Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear It podcast. Music Explored. Explored, brought to you today by Open Studio. Go to openstudiojazz.com. Oh, your jazz lesson needs. Peter, what are we talking about today? This is Emotion Emotion, by the way. By because, our very own Peter Martin. Well, many people ask in the comments for years now, what is that? That's Emotion in Motion. Your original composition. It has been Is anything really original, though? No. But it's as original as it can get. And uh, it has been our theme since the very beginning, since episode one. It has been the theme. Has it? Yeah. Mm. I bes- Season one? Season one, episode, episode one. We I did even... the bespoke theme song, and we drew that out of a hat, and it happened to be just perfect. It was royalty-free, so that worked out nicely. Royalty-free is always good, although... Yeah. Sometimes when it gets in the YouTube videos, we get dinged for it. We get blocked And it's by like, ourselves. you owe Peter Martin 30 cents. Peter Martin like, owes Peter Martin. Bro, yeah. this is Peter Martin. What are you talking about? Bro, don't tase me. Bro. Anyway, Peter. <laughs> uh, I'm happy to be fun. here today. That was Beatrice. fun. Beatrice. Yeah, that's Sam Rivers Beatrice, which is one of our seven greatest jazz standards of all time, question mark? Seven times two? 14? Yes, we have two separate lists here. I thought it would be fun to compare and contrast our list of the seven greatest jazz standards of all time. Before Pretty we... sure that's the tune I... Let me just look here. Yep, that's the tune I know the least. <laughs> oh. As was evidenced oh, by my approach. Yeah, no, I thought that... Well, luckily, you were up against me, who it seems like, even though I know that tune very well, it sounded like I knew it the least, so... Well, I was fitting in, I think, with what you're doing, so it's, that's, it's a fun tune. I haven't played it a lot. It's a great tune, and there's some, there's some uh, idiosyncrasies that happen in the Ba-do-do-do. recording session. That's that, an F minor, though. Like, yeah. Well, or is it? Oh. We'll get into that when we listen to it. Well, I played it F minor every time, so sorry. So we actually have 14 different tracks here, and we thought we would talk about, these are, I mean, these are almost jazz standards that define us, right? Jazz thought, standards or jazzy standards? Jazz standards. So we, first of all, we should define that. Yes. Get so dogmatic. These, these are not great, Amo- great American songbook standards. Gas. These are not gas. These are not gas. <laughs> great American songbook standards. These are jazz. No. <laughs> J- just. No. Nope, no. Nope. Nope. Can't say that. Jazz standards. Can't jazz, say anything. <laughs> these are just jazz standards. These are meaning that they're not written for a Broadway musical and then adapted by jazz musicians <laughs> later. They're not a Tin Pan Alley song that was played by Miles Davis. Where is Tin Pan Alley, by the way? It's in New York City, I think. Is it? Possibly Midtown. Sounds right? sketchy. It does sound sketchy. It's an alley. I bet there's a Starbucks on it now, though. 100% there's a Starbucks <laughs> on it. Um, but we we need to delineate. So a jazz standard is... An original composition written by a jazz musician. That's correct. An original composition written by a jazz musician um, that is now a standard in the jazz repertoire. So. so I guess the standard part, as opposed to just a jazz composition, would imply, and we are propagating, that it might be something that's been adopted by a wider swath of musicians as an accepted part of the oeuvre. Of the oeuvre. Of the what? The oeuvre. You know, like, that's French. So I thought, which is, that's beautiful, French, Peter. <laughs> um, just gorgeous. I thought we could count these down. Oh. Like seven to one. Like really? my seven, your seven. Yeah. Okay, mine are in no particular order, but that's fine. Oh. I don't know. Well, it'll, it'll still be fun. Is your number one, what did you, you mean that's your top jazz standard? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. Do you want to rearrange yours really quickly? No, okay. I because mine are all. You stand equal. by it. Okay, I stand great. By mine. My number seven is my most recent jazz standard. <laughs> Ooh, it's from Kenny. Ever G. heard this on the pod before? <laughs> Kenny Garrett, sing a song, a song. When we did a podcast about this episode or about this album, yep, an episode about this album, I it rekindled my love of this song. Oh, it's great. And so we've been doing it with the trio. The Adam Menace Trio, and I've just been loving it. So that it. makes it a standard. It is now a standard in my book. But I, I'm having so much fun playing it. This is Sing a Song a Song yeah. from Kenny Garrett's Songbook album. That I understand now why so many musicians have this in their repertoire. Simple little ditty. Simple but effective. It's just gorgeous. Kenny Kirkland. On the piano, Jeff Tane Watts on the drums. Who's on bass on this one? Nat Reeves. Nat Reeves, thank you. Yeah, that that's loud. An amazing track. It's so much, perhaps. One, two, that? three, four, five, six. Hexatonic scale. Yeah. Look at you. Look at this guy using his newfound theory that he doesn't need. <laughs> Definitely. Need I nice. can see now That's why so many one. people play it. I love it. It's easy to learn, but it's got a lot of great lessons in it. It's a really easy to fun. learn and easy to love. 
really fun. It's actually form. not that easy. To learn. I mean, it's got it's it is e, it's, so it's that's, challenging uh, in some regards, but yeah, great song, great song. Little moo. Yep, little moo action in the bridge. The bridge that only happens once in the whole song. Right, never, never happens soloed again. Yeah. Illegal to solo over. Some it. great solos 47 by... 47 states. Some great solos by Kenny Garrett and Kenny Kirkland on, on this. In fact, two solos by Kenny Garrett on yep. that. Uh, next up is something, your number seven is not that easy to play. Oh, we're going back and forth, back and forth. Back boom, and forth, boom, I like it, forth, I like yeah. your style. Seven. Oh. I want the listeners to guess who this is. That's Giant Steps. Who's the uh, pianist? Mo Miller. Mo Miller. I've from been the- wanting to work in. We, we don't talk enough about Groove, as we affectionately knew him. Mo Miller, the great. Incredible Groove. I love Mel- Mo of course, had great bands, great trios, but solo piano. Such a master. Such a big influence on, on our generation of pianists, for sure. That's from the album Mo Miller Solo. By the way, we do have a bespoke Spotify playlist for this. Producer Caleb's going to put that in the show notes so that you can go to Spotify. By the oh, way, he's going to put a link to it. He's not going to put a link to it. And uh, go, like that. He go follow he us over on the Open Studio Spotify <laughs> channel because we've got some, we got a tons of bespoke playlists over there. So yes, you some hear, legal in some countries, some illegal in others. Yeah, no, every every time we make a playlist for you'll hear it. It goes over there on the Open Studio Spotify channel. So go over to the Open Studio Spotify. I'm channel. nervous because our number one playlist I'm looking at right now is called the Real Ten Greatest Jazz. Oh, albums and it's a good one. It's yeah, a good that's one. A, that's a controversial one though. Next up for my number six. Yes. Oh, not controversial. Not controversial. This is this is as jazz standard as it gets, right? Gotta know. Deservedly this. so. Gotta know this. Do you have to know it correctly? Apparently not. <laughs> Many people don't. <laughs> Just defining the Dorian, right? I listen to listen to the bass here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Peter. Listen to that again. Oh, I know it. What's that? There's a special thing that Retchy Workman does. He might do it on the second time. I know that. All right, listen, listen. Right there. That. He hits a D from the yeah. F to the D. Yeah. He he bounces off the F to a D before he hits the E. Listen to that again. Right there. I think that's... I wonder if that's where people got the... This is Footprints, Wayne Shorter from Footprints. Yeah. Isn't that great? That's so good. That's a cool little detail. But the correct changes are actually D7, D flat 7. Yeah, I saw it in the real book. No, that's not how it goes. In the new real book, what is it again? It's all of it. It's like D13. D flat 13. Strange, strange. Right. Footprints Weird. From, from Wayne Gross. Shorter's Adam's Apple, sorry, is the name of the oh, album. I see why you like that. I, f- I see where you're going with that. I love that one. Uh, well, coincidentally here, my number six is Wayne Shorter as well. Great minds think alike, right? Look at that. We've lined wanna, up here. Yeah. This is one of my favorite tunes too. Great jazz standard. Gotta know this. Infant Eyes from Speak No Evil. Great album cover. Damn. So 
such a gorgeous melody. standard there my friend that is a great jazz standard that's wayne shorter herbie hancock on the piano ron carter on the bass veen eldon jones on the drums on the there infantized from speak no evil classic album yes uh so that takes us to number five peter my number five was our intro song this is from the great sam oh, we can rivers check our changes <laughs> we can check our changes Jackie Byard on the piano. Jackie Byard. Another Ron Carter. Ron Carter shows up on this list quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. Which is funny. Not funny, just true. <laughs> yeah, what's funny about it? It's just remarkable. I said that. I love this song so much. This is a standard. It might be a regional standard because players here in St. Louis play it because of the great Willie Akins. Yeah. But I, it's one of my favorites. Check this out. Uh, major to minor. That's the second time. That was, but that D, it sounded like they went to a, he went to a major before into the minor on the D minor. I think so. Maybe that was just a passing thing, though. I think so. On the D, ma- on the D minor. On the D minor? Yeah. Where? On that first course. Wait, see if he does it here. I think that's what I was doing. No, it's coming up right now. This. It's oh, minor. Just yeah, yeah. That's but what that's I was going to point out. It's the first time. Major seven and major third. Here's now. the first time. Yeah. Yeah. One of our Open Studio Pro members, Holger, as we were yeah. working on this song, pointed out that isn't that D major and shouldn't that be a part of the changes? That is the only time in the entire... I was going to say, what about the head out? Do they do it? No, okay. and not in the changes. That was I just think a that Jackie is a Bayard Jackie Bayard error because this had never been played before, this recording uh, right. section. So Jackie Bayard was probably But he covered it so beautifully. He did though. this little like... That's right. Yeah. Make it make wrong and strong. You're just one chromatic tone away from being right. That's a great one, man. This is a little bit... This is absolutely a standard. I, I know it is more of a regional thing, but it's such a... Uh, the couple times I played this, actually, was Nicholas Payton loves this tune. Oh, that's great. So there was a brief moment in New Orleans where I'd it kind of became a regional... A little bit of a regional standard as well. Well, yours is definitely... Also, that was a big standard back in the 90s yeah. in New Orleans. I think it still is. I think is it still it? is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this has become now, we talked about this before. This is uh, a new standard. Everybody, you know this was coming, right? <laughs> this is Peter. This is your number five. Yeah. I actually didn't know how much Shout this was played. Bowler. Yeah. Where yet? Roy Hargrove. Strasbourg Saint Denis from Ear Food, Montez Coleman on the drums, Dan Buller on the bass, Gerald Clayton on the piano. We've been doing this in the trio a little bit too. It's fun to play. It's hard to play on the trio. Yeah. Because you're missing 
You really miss having a, a rhythm section behind you with that one. Yeah. Moving around those, uh, those I mean, you can grab it with your left hand. Those pentatonic dyads. You gotta be... Oh, look at him using the correct terms. Come on, man. You gotta be dexterous. Okay, my number four yeah. is certainly a standard. This is one of my all-time favorite tunes to play. You know, Peter, you've been doing... You've been doing different versions of some of these, and I've been kind of going right down the. I've been kind of going. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm going right down the middle using the original versions. So yep. on this one, I'm gonna. He's calling it audible. I'm calling it audible. He's creating it audible. I'm gonna do a different. Dare I say? Better version of. Whoa. Solar. Oh. Miles Davis is so large. You love this guy. This is my favorite version. That's your boy. By far. That I think is your boy. This is, yeah, I'll take Friend that. Friend of the pod. This is from uh, Art of the Trio Volume 4, live at the Village Vanguard. gentleman that left the longest comment we've ever had on the You'll Hear podcast. Brad Meldow channel. did leave us the record-setting longest comment. Please don't try to break that record, as this is our favorite record, because Brad Meldow commented on one of our YouTube videos, which is amazing. Fun fact. What? Every evening, <laughs> Mrs. Manis... Adam's wife. We won't divulge her name for privacy reasons. Every evening, Adam has his wife read him that comment as he's in bed to go to sleep to. It's, it's like only, a lullaby. It's the you. only thing that, that calms me <laughs> enough to get me to sleep. It's like being in, in my mother's cradle. <laughs> right. Yeah. And he's and you are in the field position as you accept those words, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Larry Gunnar on the base here. Always a gutsy move to go with the bass solo first. I love when you got Larry, the bass solo when you got Larry Grenadier in your back pocket, Larry's not amazing. a bad move. I wonder. I think. I think Bob and Ruben had Larry on their podcast, Upright Citizens. Yes, one of our sister podcasts here. And uh, sister podcast, right? Yeah. In the pod family, under the umbrella. <laughs> Come on, sis, get under the umbrella. That's awesome. So well, hold on, hold on, got it. <laughs> hold on, man. Oh, we listen to the whole thing. Well, we're gonna talk through most of the bass. <laughs> got 14 tunes, dude. All right, I'll skip ahead. I'll skip ahead. <laughs> you'll you'll be listening to this at bedtime. Don't worry. <laughs> Can't you wait till then? <laughs> it's just it's just a great form. Do you consider this a blues? No. Why not? Because it's not a blues. Well, I mean, it's 12 call, bars. It starts on the one, goes to anything. the four. So that's what makes it a blues. Well, I don't know. Can you play a blue scale over the whole thing? Yeah. I told you. Okay, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> not, somewhere if everything's the, a blues, then nothing's blues. I know, but somewhere in the back of my mind, I always think of Solar as a blues just because... Of you the, love this period of Brad Meldow, don't you? What, the late 90s Brad Meldow when he was absolutely <laughs> on is. fire? Yeah. <laughs> Well, yes. Why so aggressive? Well, because I'm a human being on the planet of Earth <laughs> with feelings and emotions and wants and needs. And that's yes, great. I love the late like 90s album Brad Meldow trio. Talk about late 90s. That's... Talk about, you can barely see a four in there, but yes, it's very late 90s and it looks <laughs> yeah, great. And great. I will have no more slagging off of the the BMT, <laughs> the Brad Meldow trio. So okay. we go to my number four. Your number four is from think... another great pianist from Ellis Marsalis. This is Swing at the Haven. This is something that, Peter, you and I have performed together a couple yes, times. Yes, this is the very rare what's going to happen right now. I'm not doing that. The fade in. The fade in. The fade in. You never hear a fade Bug in. Bug or a feature. <laughs> well, you never hear it. I, I just It makes you curious. What, how know. long was this intro before they started? <laughs> uh Something I'm noticing is almost everybody's playing these originals a lot slower than we just put everything. There's so much more. I know, right? Everybody's so relaxed. It's a great tune, though. It's got every hallmark of a great jazz standard. It's got a beautiful, singable, simple melody, and it's got really fun changes to play over. It's fun, it's exactly. Got a great groove and like yep. really nice moments that happen. Hits. Yep. They're all simple, but they all have little quirks to them that make them a little bit like, mm, to really nail them. This is from the album Heart of Gold. This was a good one. This was, I believe, Jason Marsalis, uh, the youngest of the sons on drums on this, I oh, think. Nice. 
I don't know this version. Shame on me. So I'm going to have to add this playlist to my personal yeah. Spotify to save it, which I'm going to do right now. Well, we are doing a podcast, so do your personal business on your own time, sir. Oh, boy. Okay, boss. Uh, <laughs> num- my number three is the classic. From Genius of Modern Music, Thelonious Monk, Round Midnight. There could have been a, this whole list could have been Monk tunes, honestly. Yeah. He probably had the most, would, would you say Monk has the most jazz standards that could have been on this list? Either, yeah. In terms of volume. Yeah. That qualify. Easily. There's two on here. Not to get I mean, anything Monk away. tunes are, are their, their own genre. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't the most prolific, but in terms of like pumping out jazz standards, yeah. Or Duke Ellington. Christ? Is that Gigi Christ on alto? Gigi? Gigi or Gigi? I don't know. Would you say Thelonious Monk had quirky renditions of his own compositions? The greatest. The greatest quirky renditions of his own. Did Monk like the whole tone scale? I love the part where the horns just play in unison to the bass. <laughs> yeah. left the melody. Mm. Amazing. Amazing. That's Round Midnight, Polonius Monk, that's the genius of modern music. Nice. Well, in an act of random kindness and happenstance and a soliloquy that needed solving, we are going to my number... What's crazy is we are we have mirrored number composers three. Yes. three times on this That's list. That's weird. And we that was from no We did not work it out. Yes. Yeah. Your number three is also Thelonious Monk, and it's Blue Monk from yeah. Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. Oh, this was not the version I meant. This is a good one too. So to me, this like blue monk, it's like a lot of blues. Like, what makes it a jazz standard? If every blues is a jazz standard, then then none of them are jazz. You're really standard. hooked on that phrase today. If everything is something, then nothing is something. Oh, you notice? Know I'm just keep saying stuff over here going to see if you'll notice. Finally, if every phrase is that phrase, then no phrase is that phrase. <laughs> if it's exactly. Wow, it's a riddle wrapped up in a conundrum. Thank you, sir. Uh, but you know, what I'm saying like, there's not. I don't think every blues needs to be, even every monk blues needs to be a standard, but this one is. Because a lot of times you can say at a jam, so let's play a blues, right? And then it might be dealer's choice. It might be, you know, saxophonist's choice or whatever. But this is one we kind of rally around. Like this is, this is one of the... Everyone knows. Yeah. I almost included, like there's so many monk tunes that I don't, I don't know if you would count as standards. Like, Yeah, not every monk tune is a I, I love this. Think of one. Man, that's one of my favorite tunes to that's play. That's not a standard, because you, you can't call it, like, is a standard something you can call in a jam session? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Everything we have here, I think you could call in a jam session. I think It you might get, be a sophisticated jam session. You might get pushed back with some of these. You might be, get pushed back with Sing a Song a Song, or Nobody Knows. Swinging yeah. at the Haven maybe could be tough. Yeah, that's a little bit more regional, but but everybody, but I, but everyone would know Blue Monk for sure. Yeah, they should, and everyone would know our next tune, which is uh, by Juan Teasel. Yes, and Duke Ellington. I'm going to throw Duke's name in there because it's an important right. part of this. This under is- the auspices. 
This is Caravan wow. from Art Blakey's uh, Caravan. We listened to this a couple of years ago. Back, 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 back. We talked about the greatness yeah. of this intro. This is Caravan. We're going to skip ahead a little bit. I skipped ahead. This one, yeah. you know, you got there. Even though there's a lot of different versions of it, a lot of different ways to play it, you feel it. I love this bridge here we mentioned during our caravan episode. Credited to Juan Teasel, who I believe played trombone with, yes, absolutely, in Duke Ellington's orchestra, the Duke Ellington Orchestra, the Duke Ellington eponymously orchestra. named. And Peter, your number two is also from the Duke Ellington Orchestra, and it might be my favorite ballad ever. Yep. And you've chosen the best version in a sentimental mood from Duke Ellington and John Coltrane. This is probably the most well-known. Sophisticated lady, too? No, no. This, this over that. I've actually never heard anybody call sophisticated lady at a jam session, but I've heard this called many times. Sophisticated lady, one, two, one, two, That'd three. That'd be wild. That'd be wild. <laughs> Gross. It's a great tune, man, and it's a great call. So I think Duke Ellington's, out of all the composers we have on here, maybe Thelonious Monk as well. Like, he drifts into the realm of Great American Songbook, wouldn't you say? No. Why not? I think Great American Songbook has to be something that singers sing in a musical, comes from Broadway, from show tunes. Hey, welcome to the show! Woo! Well, you notice that jazz musicians <laughs> never grab those kind of <laughs> songs from the musical, but they do grab others. But uh, no, I think... It has Duke, to. But no, but sometimes they come from movies. They do. But I feel like Duke Ellington is... He's jazz. He's the jazz. No, he musician. is jazz, but I'm saying, but there's some like, well, what about Gershwin's? Because they're definitely straddling the line into jazz. Some of that's them. Great American Songbook. Great American sure. Songbook. Hard line for Adam. Well, all those students are from Gershwin. They're from musicals. Do not cross this line. They're from musicals. Okay. These guys are writing songs for their art that they're making. Okay. It's not coming from another source, right? Okay. Man, You're you think Monk is making Great American Songbooks? No, but I'm saying he has certain like certain. Well, n maybe not as much because the lyrics, although there's some great r lyrics written for his compositions. Name that, one. Oh, it's about to dip oh, that's around true. midnight. That's true. That is some good lyrics. Okay. <laughs> yeah, actually. Um, John Hendricks has some great ones for Monk tunes. But yeah, no, that's why I said I more Duke Ellington, you know. Yeah. Maybe. Or Lush I, Life. I used to visit all the very. That games. seems like Those it could be right maybe. out of a musical, but I would definitely say that's more of a. Jazz standard. Listen, there's, we're talking about know. labels. Okay. It's not going to be perfect, but you get the idea. I think we're up to your number one. Before we do the number ones, number we have some glaring omissions that I'm realizing. <laughs> well, of course. There's no compositions here by Dizzy Gillespie. 
by John Coltrane. Yes, there is. There was a John Coltrane one. What one? Oh, Giant Steps. That's right. Thank you for putting Giant Steps. My first one. That's true. Um, well, then we're good. We are. <laughs> Those are the only people. Sonny Rollins. Well, there's no Sonny Rollins compositions. Yeah, I mean, that I mean, would be like that would be the top one. That's a standard. That's definitely a standard. Yeah. And that could have made the list for sure. I think my, my number one. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna cover some bases with that that you wouldn't have thought was the glaring omission, but it really is. So some people think my number one was written by Charlie Parker. Yeah, but when I is. put that out there in circa 2020 on the internet, I got a lot of pushback. This really? was not written by Charlie Parker. Some people think it was written by Miles Davis. Some people think it might have been written by Dizzy Gillespie. Some people think it might have been written by Red Rodney. Some people think it might have been written Fats by Navarro. Fats Red Navarro. <laughs> Some people think it might have been written by Preemptive Strike. Bud Garland. There's, <laughs> Bud Garland. there's many. There's many. There's Dizzy many Gillespie. People. I've never heard, but I always thought it was Charlie Parker. That's what I thought too. But apparently, if you do just the minimal amount of googling, <laughs> you'll find that it's pretty ambiguous. Who, okay. Who actually probably wrote Donald Didn't. Trump. This is like the original recording, though, isn't it? Is yes, that Miles that and Charlie Parker? That, that, That's Miles, right? Yeah. A young Miles. Is. Damn, Miles was everywhere. Yeah. I know. Miles. It's like the Forrest Gump of. Started with Bird. Yeah. And then it was Cindy Walker. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cool Mo D. You actually cool Mo D. <laughs> what a life. Cool. If you've seen him lately, it's not as cool as I remembered him. Cheers. So why is this my number one, Peter? Because this is a music theory lesson within... It really is. ...within a beautiful melody. It's a First of all, it's a really fun melody to play. It's a beautiful, singable melody, even though, much like, you know, a, a, a Bach cantata <laughs> Bach. or fugue, it has these, like, these swirling melodic devices that go all over the place. But yeah. if you learn this tune and learn just the root movement to this, yeah. it teaches you how to get around bebop changes. It is so yeah. useful as a player to learn Donnelly, and I think that's why it is the greatest jazz standard of all time, other than the fact that it's a freaking burner and it's a really beautiful melody structurally. Kids today are still learning it, and I'm sure it'll be around for another 100 years, you know? Yep. Well, I'm just, I'm, I'm just texting with a expert on this that will actually give us the answer. Because, you know, sometimes people think, oh, I'm going to Google it, I'm going to look up this, I'm going to look at Wikipedia. Are you texting Chris McBride? Um, I'm, are you texting Charlie Parker? Uh, Chat GPT. Uh, the jazz tune Don Lee is attributed to saxophonist Charlie Parker, but many jazz historians believe it was actually composed by Miles Davis. It was fir first recorded in 1947 by the Charlie Parker Quintet, which included Miles Davis on trumpet. While it's officially credited to Parker, Davis later claimed authorship of the complex. Of course he did. How convenient, Miles Dewey Davis from East St. Louis, that you, after Charlie Parker from Kansas City, Missouri, passed on that you claimed ownership. Um, I don't know what I'm saying. Um, then the last thing it says... Anything about Red Navarro? Jazz piano star Adam Manish thinks it's written by uh, Red Navarro. <laughs> okay. So inconclusive. Inconclusive. That's what I'm saying. But definitely a standard. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All right. For my number one, um, this sounds like I'm sort of checking a box, a, a box on this. but And I am. But it's an important box. And I'm just going to play this. This is a standard... Oh, you're going to play it. Nice. Oh, sorry. No, 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 that's good. I like it. I thought that was my cue. Go ahead. That was cool. But I'm going to play it. Thought I heard Hard. Wait. You nasty. You dirty. Take it away. away. You're terrible. You're awful. Take it away, I thought I heard him say Howard. I thought I heard Buddy Bolden shout Open up that window and let that bad air out <laughs> Open up that window and let the foul air out I thought I heard Buddy Bolden sing Thought I heard Judge Fogarty say Judge Fogarty 30 days in the market Take him away 
Get him a good broom to sweep with. Take him away. I thought I heard him say. Thought I heard Frankie do some shout. Yeah, I'll give me that money. <laughs> So specific with his narrative. <laughs> and violent. It's a different time. I mean, give me that money like I explained you. <laughs> Explain I'm gonna it. Beat it out I tried to call this at the Darkroom <laughs> Jam session and <laughs> don't the words. They're like, which version? This is uh, Buddy Bolden Blues, of course, by Jelly Roll Morton. OG composer. Jolly Roll Morton? Did you just say Jelly Roll Morton? Jo okay, Jelly Roll. Red Morton. <laughs> <laughs> he was an albino a like darling Morton <laughs> yeah I mean this isn't I mean I know some of you might be like oh of course I can't say boo because it's jelly roll but this is an important albeit regional standard certainly in the new South Louisiana area all the way from Lafayette Lafayette I've heard Baton, you do some Baton killing Baton versions Rouge. of this song of Buddy Bolden Blues. yeah but it's just it's an important tune oh now we go right to Duke Ellington um, but it's uh, I wanted to have something in there with like that connection but you hear it in you know with the beat and the groove like there like when we listen to Louis Armstrong because he was part of the the lineage of the music from almost the beginning yeah I mean certainly a direct connection with you know um K King Oliver uh Buddy Bolton I mean, I, I mean everyone's like but Buddy Bolton was great there's no recordings of him I'm just assuming he was great he's kind of a legend I'm not on that like, he is a oh legend my God. I know but I can't be like whoo I love his phrasing Really? Do you? Yeah. That's this, you talk about secondhand information. But Jelly Roll, we do because of these great recordings. That's right. Especially from the Library of Congress stuff, which was later in his life. But you really get... Like the, the, the roots of the music, everything that became. Yeah. But it all started from that. And this tune is still like, if you're in New Orleans and somebody calls this, you just go into it. It's 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 almost like... Bay, bo, ba, day, bo, ba, bay. There's a bunch of tunes like that that are just like standards for such a long time. We can play them modern, you can play them calypso, you can do them a lot of different ways, but they're really jazz standards. OG, I put that as the OG jazz standard. That's great, yeah. What are some Louis Armstrong jazz standards? What would you say, like Strudden? I mean, yeah, Strudden was some Barbie, which was actually written by Lil Hardin, yeah. um, wife at one time to him. I think there's a lot of Tin Pan Alley ones that he made into jazz standards. Yeah, for sure. Bina. And that was really early on, you know. What's that bebop there? Dinah, you're red, red, red Dinah. You've got it in finer. In the state of Carolina, Red Navarro, Red Navarro, boom. Okay. You got to go. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. We got the standards, Peter, bro. It's Fats Navarro. <laughs> okay, thank you everybody for being here. Don't forget to go to openstudiojazz.com. Do they know about the little secret? No, only in important people. No, go ahead and tell them. No, what? No, after the credits roll, we always put in something well, special. Well, don't tell them you're spoiling it now. Well, no, it'll never go otherwise. Okay. Tell them about Open Studio. Tell them about Open Studio Pro real quick. It's Stick not a, around. It's not an Easter egg if you let them know about it, though, but shh, if you let them know what it's happening. Well, shut up, Red. <laughs> <laughs> openstudiojazz.com slash pro we are just beginning our blues season our that's first right. season that's of all right. time it's not too late to join come on in we have an application process but it's a painless application just to match you up make sure that, that match you, are, you up match you up got it yeah it's fall when the leaves turn red <laughs> uh, stick around if you'd like uh, and gala don't forget about that till next time you'll hear it Come on back. We told him we're coming back. Man, you don't take... You, have you never... You're, you're more of a director than a being direct. I'm trying to direct you. You don't take direction well, sir. You're a real leader, aren't you? Uh, y yes. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> okay. So this is our fun... You don't... You've forgotten already. This is our fun little part at the end where we give no, them no, an I Easter get that. Egg. I get that. But why were you telling me to get Because it'd be fun here. if they come back and there's empty chairs and then we seat in them. It's drama. It's showbiz, baby. So just, Borscht belt. You've never we, been there? Can we do that Ever again? drank because it? Because did you see what happened? Caleb... Caleb came back while I was leaving, and then when we came back, he went to black. I know, I know. Caleb likes to, he'll fix that. He'll smooth it out. Okay, so 
since you guys stuck around, we're going to give you a little bit of info on what happened earlier. Uh, Adam, we were trying to figure out the possible composers to Donna Lee, right? Is this okay to say? This is fine. I mean, we're this saying is kosher. It. Um, we said Charlie Parker. I said, yeah, maybe Miles Davis. I said we were Red, like, Red Navarro. And, and then I he don't was know like, where Red that Navarro. name came from, but it's been <laughs> I a love long... It. It's, we're at the end of, I don't make it. It's not a big like this, deal, but, but what was funny is Adam... No more podcasts after If you after ever lunch. hear us clapping, that means we're trying to do an edit. I was like, no, we're not editing that out. That's not a cancelable offense. It's not. By but, saying Red Navarro instead of Fats Navarro. It's not, but I You're meant not to gonna say get Fats, for and I didn't, and uh, it's just it's an easy thing we can easily Actually, Red is probably more kosher than Fats at this point, Navarro. Why? You know. Phobias? <laughs> Body shaming? Body shaming, <laughs> exactly. He was a Trumpet thin man. <laughs> was he? No, he was, he was a portly gentleman. As and we really can't leave this in. <laughs> yes, we can. All right, thank you guys for sticking around. Gala, if you enjoyed this, gentlemen and ladies Nobody agreement. enjoyed this. <laughs> Until next time. You'll hear it. It's faded. Not even faded.